How are we all doing today? Welcome to another groovy Tuesday. As we approach Christmas, I can't believe Christmas is coming around so quickly. Now, I know it takes a while for you to sort of join in. I can see the numbers sort of jumping up on the side. I should get the all clear from the lovely Jilly in a moment. So hopefully you can hear me. Bit nipper. I don't know why I've got a short sleeve shirt on today. <clears throat> It's only whilst I'm here in the studio and then I've got a big woolly jumper and everything else. Sounds is good. Thank you, Jilly. So Jilly is in the room with you today. So um, if you have any questions, then ask away. And if I look up and I happen to see those questions, then I'll answer them if I can. Otherwise, Jilly or the lovely design team will be in the room to help you out. So good morning, uh, here we all come, all oh, the lovely familiar places, places, faces, <laughs> or names even. So how are we all doing? Anne, Carol, Bernie, Linda, good morning, good morning, Mo, Andrea, welcome to another episode of Groovy Tuesday. I can't believe we're up to episode 36 already. Where has this year gone? crazy. I'm not sure whether this year's gone quicker or last year's gone quicker. What do you think? How have you found this year? It's been sort of very mixed, hasn't it? Very sort of up and down and, and everything else. So, but the, what was I going to say? No, that completely went out. But the end of the year is fast approaching. That's what I was going to say. And um, and we roll into 2022. Wow. Gosh. Yes. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Hilda. There we go. I can see the lovely Jillies in the room with you. So um, don't forget any questions and ask away. So have you all been keeping busy this week? What have you all been up to? Christmas card making? Maybe you make it. Is anyone making a Christmas cake? I know um, when my mum used to, well, as Christmas was coming, she'd probably start, I think it was in about November, um, to, to make her Christmas cake and then adding whatever it was, brandy, every couple of days or every week, I can't remember now. Um, yeah, has anyone, anyone been making Christmas cake or stuff ready for Christmas? Any nice treats that you can sort of, that will keep until Christmas Day? Let me know what you've all been up to. It'd be nice to, to see what, what's been keeping you out of trouble, so to speak. Lorraine's working. Oh, Carol, chocolate fudge. And that will last till Christmas, you reckon? Not if it was in my house. That would be gone as soon as it was made. <laughs> so, we'll grab a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. Cup of coffee? Cup of coffee? Oh, it's going to be one of those mornings. Jennifer's making a Dundee cake. Mmm. What else have we all been up to? Mince pies and making. See, look, we've got our own sort of home bakery class in the Groovy Tuesday, haven't we? So, um, yeah. So who finished their homework from last week? Go on, put your hands up. Who, who finished their homework? I, I've a confession to make. I finished mine off this morning. So, um, should we have a look? This is what I finished this morning. I did all my perforating and I went all over. So, I used the basic grid to complete. See, I quite like the look of that. Just the embossing and the perforating. If I come in on this camera, I wonder if we can get it a little bit closer. There we go. See, I did all my perforating. I went all the way around the outside. I went on the inside. So now I have choices. If I wanted to pico cut around the outside or the inside to create a beautiful frame, then I can. Let me just zoom in a little bit. There we go. Perf Oops. Yeah, I reckon that's about it. Yes, you can see that. And I've got it on a piece of card, which doesn't really need with the black mat underneath. So we, we have choices now, don't we? If you're into your pico cutting, 
then you could pico cut all the way around the outside and on the inside and you'd get a beautiful little frame that you could use to pop your work behind or you could go with a larger piece to to frame it but i thought what we'd have a look at i want to build a little scene on the inside so over the past month or so we've been looking at various different plates haven't we we've been looking so i need to zoom out now up and down i need to get like a remote for the thing so we're going to go out a little bit there we go so we've been looking at the barbara's one two three christmas tree sample it's not one two three barbara's christmas tree sampler plate and i made a series of quick and easy christmas cards do you remember let's have a look i've got them here just by taking the design exactly how they come and i saw on the um clarity matters saturday share blog grace had chosen one of you lovely viewers at home and you showcased all the little christmas cards that you'd created and it was it was brilliant apologies for forgetting the name but you can make i mean look just the different color of the design of parchment is fantastic for really quick and easy cards did you know we've got the little sampler packs now so or the taster packs of the design of parchment so if you think oh you really want to give it a go but you're not sure about your, your sort of the pennies in the bank especially with it coming up to christmas then we do the fantastic taster packs now where you get 24 sheets in each pack there's 12 designs just like the normal designer parchment 12 sheets no 24 sheets two sheets of each 12 designs and um yeah, I think they're on special offer at the moment as well. So if you wanted to give the designer parchment a go and you think, oh, not sure about that. I tell you what, once you you give it a go, if you're new to the Groovy system, then it's fantastic for creating really quick and easy cards. So we was looking at the, the lovely Christmas tree plate. Let's pop that to one side. And I, these are still selling like mad. Barb's names be good do good feel good and then we had the little live good so i thought to decorate the middle part of my design well i'm going to go with the names and the christmas tree now if you're working if you've done all your christmas cards and you're thinking right okay well i don't want to go with christmas card any design can go in the middle you basically got a beautiful delicate elegant frame so you can put whatever you want in the middle now if you're a bit worried and thinking oh i'm not sure i don't want to mess it up after spending all this time then if you take where's that gone i had it here so that's what i get for, look if i take the pico dies and i cut a pico square that fits perfectly within that frame. So I could do my work on this and then use some brads to attach it. Or if I, I, I mean, I could just take one of these little Christmas trees on the designer parchment and pop that straight in the middle. So it's all about having choices when we're working with parchment and the groovy system. So I thought what we'd do rather than start straight off with um, pico cutting I thought what we'll do is we'd build a little scene on the inside okay now I feel fairly confident in what I'm about to do but as I say you may want to just take a scrap I mean even just for your positioning to see what it would look like just take a square of parchment and practice on that first you don't have to add all the detail you might want to just add the outlines of the particular um, designs. So what we're going to need for this session is a scrap of parchment, if that's what you want to work on. We're going to use the groovy number one and two tool, a selection of plates. So I'm going to go with my lovely little gnomes and the Christmas trees. 
I'm going to need, what else am I going to need? I'm going to need my groovy guard, um, tumble dry sheet, my various different plate mates. So I've got my A5 square plate mate and my A4 square plate mate. I've got that in front of me. And I think that's all I'm going to need for, for today. Oh, and if you are into your pico cutting, we will do a little bit of pico cutting towards the end of the hour. So you may want to grab your, your scissors, whether you've got the ring lock, the pico, um, the ring lock, the exclusive or the perga cutters. So you may want to sort of grab those ready for later on. If you're not sure about your pico cutting, um, for what I'm going to do is a good way of sort of warming up to get a really nice effect and it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'll give you a few minutes. I'm going to have a sip of this lovely coffee. Oh, dear. So... Oh, I should have put a longer sleeve shirt on today. Normally in the studio with all the lights and, and everything else, it's quite warm, but I'm sure we'll warm up when we get going. Okay, so are we ready to rock and roll, as they say? I don't know who says it, but it sounds good, doesn't it? So to start off with, I'm going to take the plate mate, which comes in the starter kit. Now, if you've got the small starter kit, then you may want to go with the little Live Good Gnome because that'll fit perfectly. Now, if you're going for, you want to go with that particular design, then you may, you'll need the adapter plate. And what do I mean by the adapter plate? Let me just grab. If you've sort of purchased the starter kit over the last couple of years, then it will be included within that but if you haven't then we have it available separately and what it is it's like a, a collar and it sits within there and that sits within there and then you've completed your area to work on actually do i like live good she's quite cheeky looking isn't she Hmm. No, I'm going to stick to the plan. Don't change it halfway through, Paul. Stick with what you're going with. Okay, so we're going to work on the back. Now, I need to know whether I want my little known to be this side or this side. I reckon I want the little gnome about here. So I'm going to turn over. I'm going to go with this little gnome here. And make sure I'm on the right side. Yes, I am. So I'm going to position him or her. Undecided on that one. And we'll take some groovy tabs. And we'll just hold our parchment in place. Now, because we've done all our perforating already, this will be feeling a little bit scratchy on your hand. So this is where the groovy guard really comes into play because it gives you that area in which to lean on. Okay, now before I get started, I'm just going to give it a little wipe with my tumble dry sheet. Okay, who's going with the gnomes? Go on, tell me, are you going with the gnomes? So I'm working on the back so that I've got all the, the prickly bits on the back because we perforate from the front of the parchment. Okay, come on, who's going with those? Let me know what you're going with on the inside of your designs. It'll be nice. It's great to see um, what everyone else uses inside the frame. Okay, so I'm gonna go with the number one tool because I want a nice crisp outline. And we'll start off with the hat. So we're just gonna push into the groove and trace the outline nice and easy see and all of a sudden little mr gnome just comes to life see? now we don't have to put the design that's on there we could choose our own design or we can leave it nice and empty 
So that's one of the great things with the groovy system is that you have choices. So let's let's just draw his little face. Ooh, slow down. Take it nice and easy. I love this little one. I love this little piece that he's holding. So he could be singing carols around a Christmas tree. So put his little eyes in. There we go. Oh, isn't he cute? And we'll put his little sheet music in, or he could be reading a poem. Nice. I think the detail on these are, are absolutely amazing. And when you were doodling them last year, it's amazing to see them come to life and how their little faces all look. Right, okay. So there we go, we've got his little face. Let's put his little outfit on. Okay. And all of a sudden, we've got this magical little good gnome. I mean, these are brilliant. So I'm going nice and slowly so you can follow at home. But I mean, look, if I lift that up and turn that over, he looks just as good without any decoration in his hat. Doesn't he? But I think we'll add in all those little details. So I'm going to pop that back into place, lined up perfectly, and then we're just going to wiggle with the number one tool still, into those little dots. Leaving a little groovy guard to lean on. Prickly little dots where we've perforated. And I thought what we'll do, we'll do the design first so that if people want to sort of carry on, but I think, I think from what I've seen on Facebook and Groovy and Clarity Worldwide, a lot of you are really giving pico cutting a go and if we just concentrate on small areas then i think it's a really good thing just just give it a go i mean at the end of the day it's a little bit of parchment isn't it but you don't have to if you don't want to that's one of the great things about being on the the groovy journey that you can as barb calls it the bus you can get on and off the bus at any point in time. Look, these little, they're like little snowballs, aren't they? On his hat. Margaret loves the gnomes. They are so cute. They are indeed. And don't forget, we've got them in stamps as well. Yeah. It's surprising that people are still coming in. Oh, we've got the gnome stickers as well. Oh, dear. Yeah. This, what are they called now? They're called the, the sticker stocking stuffing, blah, 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 something like that. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, we've put little Mr. or Mrs. Gnome in place. I reckon he's good to go now. So we can lift that off of there. Look. So you could put the put another name in there as well to keep him company. But I thought it'd be nice to put the Christmas tree behind him so that it looks as if he's sort of singing carols in front of the tree. What do you reckon? Yeah. Okay. So let's pop that one to one side. I'm going to bring in my larger plate mate. Turn that over. We shall. I've got my groovy tabs to hold it together. I've got groovy tabs on the mat, which are catching. Pop them to that side. That one's going to go there. I'm going to take my Christmas tree plate, pop that there. See, we've got nine different trees to choose from. But I think this one's really sort of nice and trad. But I think this one would work well as well. 
Mmm. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I don't know. I'm going to stick to the plan and I'm going to go with this one. So again, we're working on the back. Now this time, I want the tree to sort of be behind the little gnome. So I'm going to position that, I reckon, do I want it there? Or do I, see, I can make a little tree as well. But I reckon there. What do you think? See, so we can put a trunk in afterwards. Mm. I want to put a little star on the top as well. So I'm going to bring it down just a tad. Bring it over. See, it's taken me just as long to work out the positioning than it is to, to trace out the design itself. Okay, let's give this a little wipe over this side. Okay, groovy guard in place. Now, the key thing with this is that we don't get carried away and trace into the name. Okay, so we'll start off with the top of the tree. I mean, it can happen where you, you do get carried away, especially if you're talking and tracing out at the same time. So hopefully, I'll, if I do this first, I tell you what, because I'm worried about going into the gnome, I'm going to do this side first so that I don't have any little mishaps. There we go. So that side of the tree is now done. So I don't need to worry about going into the gnome. And we can complete the rest of the tree. I think this works really well. Now, decisions again. Do we want to put the little candles on that? I think we do. I think it needs a little bit of illumination. So we've got another candle just there. Really, really nice. Yeah, I think this will be lovely once we've finished. It'll be great to see on Groovy Worldwide what you come up with, with this frame. And do you remember last week when we were talking, we would say that you could just spend sort of like an afternoon doing the embossing and then another afternoon doing the perforating. Um, yeah, the perforating. And then you could spend another afternoon doing the pico cutting if you choose to. And then just put them all in a folder. And then you've got your frames good to go. Right, let's have a look. Let's turn it over. Nice. I like that. But we've got a floating tree at the moment and it's missing a little star at the top. So let's bring, how big a star do we want? I reckon we need to go big with our star. So make sure I'm still on the back. And then position our star. There we go, so our star's in place. And now it needs a bit of a, not a trunk, a stalk. No, not a stalk, a trunk. Oh dear. And I've got this nice one here. So let's have a look. Oh, ruby tabs. So I reckon, see that needs to be central. So what I'm doing, I don't know if you can see, let's have it if I come in on that one better. No, I think the overhead one's better. So what I'm doing, see I would, you would think automatically you put the trunk 
where it goes up at that point there. But when I, I've done that before and then realized it's sort of off center because the center of the tree is where the star is. So if I bring the tree underneath and line that up with the point there, then I should, I'm just gonna move up a little bit, So now I can put my trunk in place. I mean, you could put some little presents around there with some little boxes as well, couldn't you? So there we go. So now, look, isn't that easy? I really like that. Now, do I want to put something in that box? Or do I want to do it? What have we got on the, the little greetings? Let's have a look. Let's pop this one to one side. Uh, that goes over there, that goes over there. So on the plate, we have, I love you, happy, cool, from me to you, peace and love, from my name to yours, feel good, do good, be good, love. And then what have we got on the little one as well? Let's just grab that. Oh, can't pick it up. And then on this one, we've got Happy Christmas. See, Noel would fit in there. Peace would work. Um, any suggestions? What do you reckon? Should I just leave it blank? Or we could put some... <laughs> snowballs on there or we could put a little star that's quite nice i like that because then that gives it a sort of a, the decoration on the back of the carol isn't it i reckon i'm gonna pop that on there so plate make back into play or do i want to go for heart no i reckon that so I'm going to position that exactly where I want it. Hold it down with my groovy tabs. And then trace out the star. Nice and slowly. No race, is there? And then add the detail. Okay. Nice. And then in the middle. Lovely. Let's have a look at that one. Where's that black bit of card gone? There it is. Let's bring it up a little bit so we can see. Whee! There we go. See how easy that is to create a, a little design in the middle of our frame that we've created. See? I, can't, I really can't wait to see what, what you all do at home. Who's crafting along at the same time? Who's getting, getting in the groove with me, so to speak? Oh, dear. Right. What do you reckon? Should we ever go at some Pico cutting? I can't believe the time just flies by. It really does. So should we give a bit of Pico cutting a go? Now we're not going to do all of it. I just want to choose areas to illuminate. So if whatever I put in the background, whether it be a design of parchment, I think the rainbow parchment or paper would look lovely in the background to add some color to it. Hmm. Okay. I reckon, right, let's do some Pico cutting. Right, so I'm gonna get my weapons of choice out. So I've got my bag. Grab my bag and get 
hopefully I remembered that. I think I've put them back in here. I haven't opened this for a while. Or did I just throw everything in after the last TV show? Possibly. There we go. Right. Exclusives. Those. Yes. That was handy, wasn't it? See, if you put it back. <laughs> Famous last words. Right. I'm going to take my phone. Pop that there. Okay. Let's get our implements ready. So, we have three different types of scissors to choose from. We have our lovely little exclusive scissors. We have our ring lock scissors. And then we have our perker cutters or squizzers, as I like to call them. Now, I can use all three of them. But the ones I find most comfortable for me are the ring lock because they have a larger aperture in the handle. If I'm going to do, if for example, if I was going to pico cut the whole of this, do it all around the outside, do all the inside, do all the bits in the middle, then I would go with the perker cutters because it just puts less on my fingers. And it's a case of just sort of snip it, you squeeze. And when you squeeze, they close and snip. Okay. When I first started doing parchment craft, it was the exclusive scissors I used. And, but I used to find that after a while that my hand felt uncomfortable because I couldn't see if I push my fingers really in, but then it becomes uncomfortable. But that's just me. I mean, these are the ones that Barb and Linda prefer to use. And they all do the same job. It's just what you feel more comfortable using. Okay. And then finally, we have the ring lock. So you look a lot more comfortable to hold. When I'm using my scissors, I come in from underneath and I have what we call the spoon position. And that's with the curve going up. Some people prefer to have the point going down, which we call the fork position. Some people prefer to come in from the top because traditionally that's how parchers were taught, that you came in through the top and with the points going down. And I remember watching um, a YouTube video with Barb, <laughs> with a lady doing it. I'm sure Barb has told the story many, many times um, and I think we watched it for about half an hour thinking, and it was just in, down, twist, snip, in, down. But, oh no, that was the white work one, wasn't it? It was the white work one. Long stroke, short stroke, long stroke, short stroke, long stroke, short stroke. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, I digress. So I'm going to come in on this camera. And let's have, I'm going to have a look at this area here. And what I want to do, see how we have these squares. I'm going to remove the squares within those embossed dots. Okay. Oh, I've just seen a question from Sally. Okay, the collar of the adapter are called on the website. It is called the numbers and tags inset plate. I'm sure Jilly will pop a link up for you. Okay. Now, if you're worried about, you've done all this work and you think, oh, I really don't want to, to ruin what I've done, then trace out an element of the design onto a scrap piece, do the perforating, and then practice on that first. Now, when we're doing the pico cutting, what we're doing is, I'm going to remove the center of this square. I wonder if I come, I'm, I tell you what, I'm going to come in really close on the overhead. So let me see, zoom in. Way, really close on that. Okay. Ooh. Bring the chair in. Ooh, that is close, isn't it? Hey, 
this way you see all the little imperfections okay so if i want to remove the inner part of this square then i need to hold my scissors over the waist so i'm going to pico cut in along here okay because this bit in the middle is going to fall out now I remember when I first started, I thought that you, you would do it on this side because that's what I thought. But no, the scissors have to be over the waist area. Okay. And I'm going to take my scissors and what you're going to do, I'm going to need my glasses. It looks big on the screen, but I can't look at the screen and do it on the mat at the same time. I'm not that good. Good. So we're working from the front as well, okay? And I'm gonna take the, I'm using this finger here just to balance. And I'm just gonna pop the scissors in. Now what you don't want to do, you don't want, if I come in on this one, I tell you what, I'm gonna come in on this one. Let me see if I can zoom in on this one. Just bear with me while I walk around to the other camera and just see if I can zoom this one in a little bit closer. Am I gonna go the right way or the wrong way? There we go. So I'll come in slowly, because once I, I've got the right, whee, there we go. Squeaky floors. Squeaky, squeaky. Okay. So let's have a look. So if I pull this back a little bit, uh, we're going to go over there. So we're going to concentrate on this area first. So I'm going to take the tips of my scissors and I'm going to pop them in. And then all I'm going to do is just gently squeeze. And as I squeeze, there we go, it's created the point. I didn't even need to, to tilt. So go back into the one you've just come out of into the next one, squeeze, there we go, and snip. It's gone a little bit blurry, or is it my glasses? I don't think that's okay. Then if I turn this round, and I'm gonna go in, down, make sure I'm in, and snip, snip. Turn it around again. I'm holding the scissors in the same place so that I can hopefully keep it in the right area. Okay, tilt. Turn it around again. Away, focus. Move it slowly. Gonna go in and snip. So now when I lift that off, Cool, there we go. So I've now got a lovely little aperture. So if we look on the overhead, there we go. You can see how we've created that. See? And it's nice just to reveal these little squares. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in one direction first, rather than keep twisting and turning, Okay, so I'm going to do all of these. So it's in, squeeze, and snip. And I'm going to turn round. And I'm going to go along this way. Come down. Oh, let's come over a little bit. There we go. We come back in on this one. It is literally the tips of the scissors that's doing the work. And once you get into a rhythm, I mean, it's not a race, but once you get into a rhythm, you know how far to open those scissors. So now I'm gonna turn it round. Let's get rid of that little bit underneath. I'm gonna turn it round. So let's have a look, so I need to be about here, I think. Yep, and then I'm going to start over here. And it doesn't take long. 
And you know what? In these little areas, I mean, it's really magnified on the screen. And I can see my own imperfections. But you know what? The whole scheme of things, it's about the finished result, isn't it? So we're going to come round that way. Ooh. See, my hand is just staying rested on the, the black mat. See if I come over here, this hand hasn't moved at all. I've just kept it in the same position. And you just give it a gentle little squeeze so that you get that point so you squeeze it very gently and then when you see the point forming then you give it a can give it a little snip some people um, a little twist some people just keep it straight it depends how quick you you squeeze the scissors really I find that sort of determines how quickly it goes so we've got those ones in it. Those all would have fallen out if I'd done it all at the same time. But we're gonna do that there. And then all of a sudden what we're gonna have is eight little boxes. See? And snip. There we go. Let me come on. Oh, I am on the overhead. So let me just bring that to one side. There we go. A few of them not so perfect. But it gives that overall effect and it creates a little aperture behind. So for um, you design a paper or your colour card that you're going to pop behind it, then it's great to sort of, you've got those little windows. And it's a really good way of just practicing your pico cutting. Okay. So should we carry on? Should we do a few more? We just do this little corner here. So let me get rid of all these little bits. We just... So I'm using the 12 by 12 super foam. You can use the, the pico foam. If you're doing this on a light panel, then the white super foam or translucent foam is perfect as well. And it's just, we're just going to go in, give it a little squeeze. I'm going to do, I'm still working over the waist area. Okay. And then I'm going to turn. So you'll notice that I'm going all in one direction first. Rather than do the boxes individually, and keep turning the parchment. I'm just doing it all in one direction first. And you'll find it's a lot quicker. I mean, there's no race to say you've got to do this as fast as what I'm doing. It just comes with practice. So we're gonna go. And there's only a couple of little snips for each of the boxes. See? go along and what I love about this design by Josie is that you can perforate and cut whatever areas you choose to it all comes down to your choice so the embossed pattern gives you a really nice design there we go look isn't that nice? So I, if I wanted to, let's get rid of those little bits there. Let's zoom out a little bit now. I'll come back in, so if I can zoom out. When you look at the overall effect of the design, all of a sudden we've illuminated different areas. We've had a little bit of texture. Yeah, they do. Margaret's saying they look like little snowflakes. Oh, they do actually, don't they? I think they fit quite well with the actual design. Okay, so I'm going to go in. Let's do this whole top section. We've got time, haven't we? Yes. So let's come in, get rid of 
those bits again. Now I'll zoom back in again. So let's have a look, we'll come back in. Whee! Back in there. And we'll have a look and we'll do, yeah, we'll, we'll carry on and do all these little boxes across there. And if I come in on this camera again, maybe I'm a little bit too, I think that's okay. If I do it this way to the camera, then maybe you can see it. It's, it really is just the tips of those scissors. Okay. Do this row down here. But for me, that's how I learned my Pico, or say learned, that's how I perfected my Pico cutting, was doing little sections like this. So we're gonna come in, and it's just remembering what it is you actually want to, to cut away. Because there's a lot of perforations on the design, you can get carried away on where you want to pico cut. And then you have to adapt your design. Do you know what I mean? I bet you've done it at home, haven't you? You've maybe traced out a piece and you thought, oh, I shouldn't have done that. And obviously you can put the, the statutory butterfly over to, to hide it. But, um, yeah. At the end of the day, what we're doing here in Groovy Tuesday is we're just picking up and just trying to improve some of the little skills. That falls away. Nice. Let's get rid of those ones. So what have we got coming up this week? Wow. Let me see. I've got my little list in front of me. So let's, I'm going to talk and pico cut at the same time. I'm gonna bring my groovy guard in, just to lean on. So tomorrow on the craft store at 6 p.m., we have a fantastic one day special. Some of you who came to, well not some of you, for those of you that attended our parchment retreat at the Spa Hotel a couple of months back, would have been introduced to a brand new technique called frosted floral overlays. And it went down a storm. And so tomorrow's one day special is the frosted floral overlay collection. Okay, I'll, I'll show you. If you haven't seen it, I have shown them on Groovy Tuesday before, but we'll have a look in the folder. So we've got them, I, it's magical. It really is. It's such a clever technique. So that's the one day special. Then in addition to that, we've got the part, we've got the designs and we're, we've printed them with black line art. And Barbara being a stamper, she went knees would make beautiful stamps. So we also have them available in stamps. So that's at six o'clock tomorrow evening on the cross. So it's six o'clock and eight o'clock. Barb's doing six o'clock. I'm doing eight o'clock. So it's like the early shift and the late shift. Then on Thursday, we continue that journey. Um, Barb's on at eight. She's got a beautiful stamping demo to show you. Oh, really beautiful. Um, so we've got, have I done that bit? So Talking and doing it at the same time isn't necessarily that good. And then also, so Barb's doing eight o'clock on Thursday morning live. Um, where am I going? There we go. I'm here. Lost my place then. So, <laughs> yeah, so Barb's on eight o'clock on Thursday morning. And then the Shack Shack at 10 o'clock, multitasking. Our Barb's good at multitasking. The Shack Shack at 10 o'clock. Then I'll be on the craft store at 12 o'clock and then at 4 o'clock. So it's a 
busy old week here at Clarity Towers. But yeah, right, let's have a look. Have I done all of them? Done all of them. So, right, let me just do these little ones down the side. And then I'm gonna, I'll am gonna show you the beautiful designs that are in the, the one day special. If you like flowers and you love Linda Williams, then you're gonna love this new technique. And it's not just for parchers. Anybody can have a go, really can, and get a beautiful, so even if you say, Groovy is not for you, but you love the effect of parchment. Barbara's always showing us how we can stamp onto parchment to create that beautiful effect. Because parchment is just another medium in which to work. Whether it be using the groovy system or traditional parching skills, or whether we stamp onto it, especially design and the rainbow, where we can remove the colour as well. Just finish this last four sides off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ready for the reveal. Ta -da! There we go. So let me now zoom out. Okay, take my glasses off as I reach up. So we'll zoom out. Okay, doesn't that make a nice, uh, it, it's, a, it's different, but it just, I think it's a really lovely way of enhancing the design. And as we say, with the groovy system, you have various different choices, don't you? And for me, I know when I first started and it was getting confident with the design. Tracing out the line art, easy peasy. No skill required whatsoever. But then to be introduced to the beautiful, delicate grid work and the lace work, and then the white work and the shadow embossing and the coloring, and then the pico cutting. Um, so yeah, it, it's so, it is achievable, it really is. And I'm not saying it because I'm here showing you what you can do. I never thought in a million years that I would, I'm a stamper, I love stamping, I love decoupage. They were, I, I, it's, I suppose it's with my hands, isn't it? And so the, the groovy system has really opened up a, a different side to my crafting. And, but it works perfectly side by side, it really does. So do you want to have a look at these beautiful frosted floral overlays? Okay, I've got these in a folder. So let's have a look. So we have, I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. That looks as if it was out of focus, but it's not, it's the folder. So let's open that up a little bit. Whee, there we go. So you've got five different floral designs, all illustrated by the lovely Linda Williams. We have the Amaryllis. We have the Christmas Rose. Beautiful, that one. The Fuchsias. Then we have the Rose. That a lot of people, that's what we did on the parchment retreat. And then we have the Tatty Tulip. See, I'm hard, I don't know which one's my favourite. I think they're all beautifully stylized flowers. So if I take one of these out and show you what is included in each of the packs. We can do this, can't we? Yes, of course we can. So you have an explanation from Linda all about the frosted overlay technique, the embossing, the colouring. Then, this is magic, this really is. You have... Can you see that? Let me get that black piece of card. I think you can see that okay. This is white printed parchment. Okay, you've got that beautiful, delicate line art printed onto the parchment. 
So what it's doing, in a way, it's replacing. See, even with a, a groovy plate, me personally, I wouldn't be able to get such a delicate, fine line art. Okay. And we'll explain more about it in the one day special tomorrow. So you're going to get four of the same flower printed just like that. And it has a little F on the top for the front. Okay. In addition to that, you then get like a sampler sheet so you can practice doing the shadow work on before you go on to your actual piece. So elements will vary from design to design. Then you get four sheets of clear parchment. Okay, more will be revealed. You get a piece of white paper that has the beautiful design printed on. You also get, now this is where it's magic, I'm gonna turn it over, black printed line art on parchment. You can't, white ink you can't print from your everyday printer. You, you, you can't. Um, so when you have a look at this, and this is, I know this is Barb's favorite, the, the black line art. And you can get black line art with the groovy system by going over with a micron pen. So you can get that effect that way. Then you also get a colored image, okay? And the idea, I mean, look, let me just show you. If I lay that over the top, you can see the type of result that you get. So rather than color on the parchment, you color or you can take a colored image and overlay that on top. Now, if I take that white line art, so you can't really, let me see if I, helps if I go the right way. It's very, very subtle. So you can't even see it, you might just see it just over here. Okay. And then finally in the pack, you get step-by-step -step instructions for the shadow embossing. All written by Linda Williams with some step-by-step -step pictorials on how to achieve that. Okay, so that is magic. It really is. And you get the same number of components in each of the five different packs. So, um, yeah. Oh, and you get folder as part of the one day special as well to keep it all in. Nice groovy folder. So I think it's going to be a fun one day special um that the technique is so clever um and it's something different so even if you're not into groovy i mean i know you're, you're here today as part of groovy tuesday but if you want to sort of try something a little different over the course of the five hours we'll break it down we'll give you tips and hints and tricks and all different things on how you can create some beautiful, beautiful line art, not line art, and coloured art as well. Um, especially the black line art, magic, it really is. The monochromatic look. Um, yeah, I mean, I always thought that I liked the, the white on white, but when you look at that black line art and you do some shadow embossing and then you introduce like a gray or a black pencil, it's crazy. It really is. And obviously you can do that with the groovy system as well. It's just a different way of interpreting it and looking at it. So, um, so I hope you've enjoyed today. Next week, we're going to carry on our little journey. I have had a chat with Linda Williams this morning. She apologizes for taking so long in coming back to us. Um, but we've agreed, she'd be ready in a couple of weeks, but it would just be for one session. So we've agreed that on the 4th of January, we'll be back in the Pergamano School, carrying on with the multi-needle tools. So I know we've had a little bit of an extended break, but I'm sure the lovely Linda in the new year will explain exactly what's been going on. Um, 
but I've really enjoyed showing you some of the basics and I think it's nice to go back and revisit some of the different techniques because we have lots of lovely new viewers um, that have joined the, the Groovy Tuesdays over the past year and you may have just come straight in when we were looking at the, the multi-needle tools and thought way or oh I like that I want to know more so by going back what we're doing is we're sort of we're revisiting and hopefully helping to improve some of the skills that you've picked up so obviously you can watch this back again on our YouTube. All of the Groovy Tuesdays are on there. All of the Shack episodes are on there. All of the Pergamano School tutorials are on there. And there's loads of other step-by-step -step tutorials from Barbara, myself, um, with other, with stamps, stencils, dies. It's a library. I'm sure Julie will put the link up for you to go back you may just want to go and have a nosy around and see what else we do um so i hope you've enjoyed today i hope you can join both barbara and myself tomorrow at six o'clock and eight o'clock in the evening and then thursday so thursday 8 a.m barb's on the craft store 10 a.m is the shack shack 12 o'clock back on the craft store and four o'clock, the final hour of the one day special. And we're broadcasting everything here from Clarity Headquarters. So that's why Barb's able to do the Shack Shack on Thursday as well. She's gonna do the show here, head off home, get set up, and then she'll be, she'll be broadcasting from the Shack Shack offices. So stay safe, hope you can join us tomorrow. Um, if you can't, then you can watch us on Rewind and I will be, yeah. I'll be back with another Groovy Tuesday with our lovely little gnomes and our Christmas tree. I'm going to finish perforating between now and next week. I'm going to finish perforating those little panels. And then next week, we'll have a look at some colour. OK, thank you for Jilly in the room and the lovely design team. I'm sure they've answered loads of questions for you. Um, so take it easy and I'll see you again next Tuesday. Bye bye now.